I'd love to dig it. Get the warrior stripe <laughs> round your face. <laughs> if we can get this poured today, yeah, means tomorrow, start digging out. Any chance we can have a pour later on today? We are going to get on with our dig. So we covered everything over last last night, last week on Friday. Sorry, it's still early. It's Monday morning. Give me a little bit of a break. Come on, I'm tired. So we've got all this covered over because obviously there's some very big holes down there. This is all covered over, so it's all safe for the client. We'll get all this out now. We're going to put some toe footings just under the footing down there. We're not going to need to do it in these two here because these are for the walls for the block and beam. So we haven't got to go over the top of these at all. These are just basically a precautionary measure just to allow us to put our blocks on and run our block and beam across. So what we're gonna do is get all this shored up down here, get shuttered up ready for the concrete pour to come. And then once this is all done, we can get this foot in Doug like I explained before. Let's carry on building. Filling up the machinery, getting ready full of juice. You don't wanna be running a diesel engine out of diesel because you can get airlocks in it. I do love to dig, there's something wrong with me, even though I'm a chippy. I love digging. <laughs> there's something wrong with you, There's something wrong with me, isn't there? Change the chippy, he's gonna build himself a little staircase. Oh, yeah. That's it mate. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is gonna be the first footing circus. <laughs> you know the old buildings in the mountains. Yeah. This is it mate, look. Get the stairs etched into the rock. Yeah. It's the equivalent, isn't it, of those guys in the Amazon rainforest. Anti-vibration gloves apparently. Perfect we'll, we'll for working see. on heavy machinery. We will see. Look at that lovely step there. Beautiful, that's what I want. Here we go, a bit of ammo. Get the, get the warrior stripe <laughs> round your face. <laughs> you know, in Predator, where he masks himself in the clay. <laughs> This water line coming in here, what happens, you get that bleeding through clay and that's what you've just got to be a bit mindful of. If I had loads of that, I wouldn't be in the trench or shut her all off because that means that the clay can flake away, becomes a bit more of a danger. All I'm doing now is just flaking away here, small bits at a time, that's all I'm doing. And then all I'll do is I'll scrape it back for John. I've hit that real blue, heavy hard clay, which is really difficult to get through. That's why it's best not to exert too much energy, even though I'm puffing and panting like an old fart today. That is blue lawyers. So there's another layer of it here as well. It's just really, really compressed and it's really solid. It's almost like as solid as slate. It's very tough stuff. So the reason we're squaring this off, when Builder Control comes round, when they inspect any footings, they always want square edges. You don't want round, because that can cause a bit of movement. You want square here, square there, so you've got a nice solid footing in the way. Which unfortunately, a digger doesn't dig square. So it means you've got to do this. Yeah, Joe, try that one just for carving the edges, mate. That's amazing. Yeah, it's got me more weight to see. I wonder how many thousands of years ago that part of the earth was exposed. Let's get Tony Robinson on the case. Tony, if you're watching this, tell us, mate. You're from Time Team, you know all about this stuff. That Joe Bass bottle. Oh, I found a really cool bottle. I think the client's got it now. It's 1917, it that's it, Leamington. Aerated water. Aerated water. I guess that was the old fancy word for carbonated. 1917? Yeah, mate. Really wow. cool. I think the client's got the bottle. I left it on the side there for him. It's a shame because the top of it's smashed off, but it still clearly says Lennington, the date on it, so it's a cool little find. That's so cool, isn't it? You always find that bit of China pot as well. You're like, yes, this is definitely a Ming vase. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Get the concrete done today, we're gonna to go for it today. Any chance we can have a pour later on today? 14 cube. Yeah? Alright mate, wicked. Cheers. If we can get this poured today, yeah, means tomorrow. Start digging that out. Start digging that yeah. out. Alright wicked, cheers mate. Bye mate.
Two o'clock. Two o'clock. So what we need to do is clean out these here. Yeah. Tow underneath that foot in there. Don't need to tow underneath that one. Yeah, just that far one, isn't it? Yeah, just that far one there. This yeah. is just take bloke and big. We squared that up. The only thing we can do, we'll shut around that pipe because obviously that pipe's live at the moment, isn't it? We'll drop straight down either side, bang the ply and put a couple of bits of timber in the bottom of it. In fact, it might be even worth just shutting the whole lot off. That's it, yeah. Feel that mistake. Yeah, because that's taking the inside sink, that is, that one there. Yeah, it's taking so, the shower and the toilet yeah. and that as well. What we'll do then, we'll put a little recess so the ply can sit against the bank to stop it being pushed in, yeah? sheet in there yeah apply sheet in that other side put some struts in it be available it's going Stop nowhere it. Getting the setup ready. So when we pour the concrete, although the concrete is self-leveling, it's always good just to have a guide to go around to check you exactly where you need to be. We're going one course above the corbelling. That will give us a nice coverage over then. That's exactly the depth we need to be. So it's just because we're coming over here and pouring a separate foot in, we're gonna make sure we've got the staff on the go so we can be exactly where we need to be. Fun bit, we're waiting, waiting for the concrete to turn up. Everything is done, we're all prepped. Everything's all scraped out ready. Pete's done a wonderful job of the shuttering, haven't you Pete? Hi job. <laughs> <laughs> we've got our tamp set up, pump guys have got their piping ready to pump the concrete straight in. We've got our vibe over there as well. We've got plenty of sheet supply so we can easily and safely cross over the footings. So now it's just the waiting game, the fun bit. Guys are all set up out there ready as well. Shout out to RS Concrete. They're the boys we always use. They're very good. It's quarter past three now on Monday. I'd like to be packing up, but we're not. How are we, Pete? Hi, John. No. Hi, this is terrible. This is the worst day ever. Worst day ever? Ever. The worst day ever. <laughs> this is the worst day of your life so far. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, my ears are big. 
We've had a great day today. We've got 14 cube in. We've dug that corner down to 2.5. We've dug this corner down to 2.5. Film and control guys have been, they've passed everything off. So what we're gonna be doing. Carry on, go on, carry on. Go on, away, go on. So <laughs> So we lasers leveled it all off around here. Over there, we've actually uh, shuttered either side, shuttered over there, because we're gonna have to do a dig out underneath there with the underpinning there, because obviously we've got a steel line running across. The next phase tomorrow is digging all of this channel out here. We're gonna dig it 150 mil below this finished footing line, and then we're gonna excavate then all of this section all over here to the same distance. We then are gonna start digging out the footings on the next day after. Okay, cool? So, here we go.